So uh, it's hard to believe uh, this is, um, is it the third day already? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, time really goes quickly, and uh, it's really nice getting to know all of you. I still have one more homeopathic to do, but we like to spend time during the homeopathic evaluation. And uh, tomorrow I'll be meeting with everyone privately after you do your exit testing, and we'll be talking to you about the customized treatment protocols for you. Because the goal is, after these three days, that we know exactly what we need to do to help you restore your vision. And continue. It's really rewarding for me and the staff to hear that many of you are starting to see better already, and the clarity, and you know, we want that to continue. So light therapy, that's the topic today, is a very important part of the program. And all of you are getting light therapy. You're getting the syntonic light therapy, which is this tube that you look through. And this is um, non-coherent light. It's not a laser. It's a regular light bulb that dispenses the light. Then you're also getting uh, laser treatment. You're getting the delta laser. That's this one. And the thorium. And those are coherent lasers. And also you're getting an ultraviolet blood irradiation today, where we take out some of your blood and we pass it through a very intense ultraviolet light. So why are we doing light therapy? Well, I mentioned yesterday, actually day number one, uh, the importance of the sun. The sun is the source of all of our energy. Without the sun, we would not exist. Um, when you're eating healthy food, essentially you're eating sunlight. Sunlight comes down from the heaven, and there's a process called photosynthesis, which the ultraviolet light, the sunlight, is converted into energy. And the plants need an element called chlorophyll. It's interesting, if I would show you a chlorophyll molecule. Who's, who's the chemist? The chemist is in here. No. no. Oh, good. And he's not going to correct me. I can, <laughs> I can speak freely. <laughs> so if you have a chlorophyll molecule, I'm going to imagine it's right here on my side. And in the human body, in the blood, there's something called hemoglobin. And if I hold the chlorophyll molecule here and the hemoglobin molecule, and you look at them and go, Dr. Kondrat, they're, they're identical. They are identical, except for one element. Does anybody remember from high school biology the one element that's different? In plants, the center part is magnesium. There's one magnesium atom in a chlorophyll molecule. In the hemoglobin, the center element is iron. That's the difference. So it's kind of mind-boggling to me that essentially we're like plants. When you go outside and you know are exposed to ultraviolet light, the sunlight is actually hitting your blood vessels and your tiny capillaries. And it is absorbing. The hemoglobin absorbs that. And that's one of the bases of the ultraviolet blood radiation, where we're taking out your blood, the hemoglobin molecules are being charged with sunlight, and it's being passed into your body. I mentioned the last couple of days about the importance of you having an alkaline pH. Alkaline pH is good. The more electrons you get into the body, more energy. You're doing microcurrent, but also when you're getting sunlight, electrons are going into your body. Uh, when you're doing the laser therapy, this light therapy. Now, there's a misconception. Um, researchers have wanted to find the difference between laser, which is a very powerful, coherent light, compared to uh, incandescent, which is scattered. And so Dr. Tina Carew, and she wrote a textbook on uh, phototherapy. She actually went into the laboratory and study the effect of light on the cellular level. Using laser, 
and then using uh, ultraviolet light, or not ultraviolet light, but non-coherent light. And interestingly, there was no difference. No difference at all. A photon is a photon. So whether you get the ultraviolet light or the light therapy from a laser or looking at a light bulb, it's the same treatment. Now there's an organization called the uh, College of Syntonics, and I'm proud to be a member of that organization. In fact, I'm the only ophthalmologist that has a fellowship. I've passed all the studying to be a fellow of the College of Syntonic Optometry. And this is a group of eye doctors that have studied light therapy for over 80 years, showing that light therapy can benefit glaucoma, macular degeneration, etc. Now those of you that have glaucoma, if you go back to your eye doctor next week and you say, hey doc, uh, what about light therapy for treating my glaucoma? What do you think he'll say to you? Probably, oh, no. uh, did you see that guy, Kondrat? <laughs> and he's going to say to you, there's no evidence. If light therapy benefited your eye, I would know about it. Hmm. And it's not going to help you. Well, in 1948, in the American Journal of Ophthalmology, which is a prestigious eye journal, peer review, there were two articles published on the benefits of light therapy in lowering the intraocular pressure. And it actually documented in this study that light therapy has a beneficial effect. So I became interested in that. I repeated that study. It was published in the modern journal showing that light therapy, certain wavelengths of light, can lower the intraocular pressure. But those of you that have glaucoma, I don't want you to think that you can throw away your eye drops and start doing light therapy. In my study, folks that had or are using eye drops, there was a very little beneficial effect using light because the drugs are artificially lowering your pressure. I think the real benefit of light therapy and glaucoma is detoxifying the eye and also stimulating the function of the optic nerve and the retina, but we'll talk more about that later on. Um, there was another study done um, it was published out of Germany demonstrating that uh, ultraviolet light, red, infrared light, can benefit folks with macular degeneration and glaucoma. And when I read that article, I really became excited. <coughs> and we actually bought the laser that they used in the study. This is called the Thor laser. It's manufactured out of England. And this is a $16,000 laser. Uh, the laser has a rather bright light. And those of you that are getting the treatment, we instruct you to close your eye and you get the treatment. So when we first got the laser, what I usually do when I get a new piece of equipment, my wife can't hear me, I usually test it on her. <laughs> and then if everything goes well, then I test it on myself, and then I begin using it on patients. We were kind of excited, and she treated her eye, and she said to me, honey, this is just like looking at the sun. And immediately a light bulb went off in my head. Um, that's a little junk, a light bulb went off in my head. <laughs> that uh, Dr. Bates, turned into the century ophthalmologist, a lot of people thought he was a quack, talked about something called sunning. And when you think about it, sunning occurs when the sun is on the horizon, either in the evening or the morning. There's a red light, a red light. And you're supposed to close your eyes, go back and forth, and the illumination of your sun crosses the retina. And that's almost identical what happens to this. So you don't have to buy a $16,000 laser to do it. If you have a clear evening, the sun's on the horizon, sunning can be beneficial. And Dr. Bates uh, reported this in the early 1900s about the benefits. So, you know, they say there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> Another joke. And it is true that we're taking a lot of these old therapies that doctor, doctors describe and just modernizing with fancy equipment. So one of my goals, and of course, 
I, I, I like to empower you as a patient. And it's obviously, this is not affordable, this $16,000 for a laser. So in my research, I came across another laser called the Delta laser. And this is really a unique laser because not only does this laser have red infrared, it has the syntonic light, which is non-coherent colored light. It also has um, uh, an infrared, or not infrared, an ultrasound and magnetic energy. So it has four parameters in one. And this is reasonably priced. I think it's around $2,000. And many patients uh, use this because not only can the laser help you treat your eye, but it also is good for musculoskeletal problems, detox. And one of the things that we're doing is we're treating the carotid artery because it's been shown to increase oxygenation to your eye. And we're also treating the sternum here and your long bone because the laser has been shown to stimulate stem cells. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of hype about stem cells, but by golly, all of you have stem cells. You don't need stem cell transplants or therapy. Get your own stem cells to work. And the best way to do that is all the things that we talked about so far in this program. Change your diet, healthy food, detoxify your body, and stimulate it using microcurrent or the light therapy. So, now we are going to send you home with a simple way of doing this. I don't think you want to put this in your suitcase and go home with it. Uh, we just have some simple glasses you put on. This is designed by a company in Belgium that have duplicated the, the exact color of wavelength. And you're going to look at a 15 watt frosted halogen bulb. And you do that for 10 to 15 minutes a day and it's equivalent to this light therapy. Now some of you have been thinking, well how can this light therapy be as effective as this. This is brighter, stronger. Well, the only advantage this has is deeper penetration. So I have pain in my knee. This is going to have deeper penetration. The penetration has to do with the frequency or blinking. If you have a real fast blink rate, it treats, treats superficially. So ladies, if you wanted to treat your skin, you want to have a blink rate of about 10,000 or about 1,000 per second, really fast. But if you're treating the eye, you want it to go deeper so it's about three seconds or every three, three pulses every second. And they've actually done studies on this to show that when the laser is blinking, it has more effect than if it's steady. There's a greater increase in ATP production. <clears throat> So light has a lot of benefit, but unfortunately, like everything in life, things have benefits, and they also can have harmful effects. Light can be harmful to you. Um, I interviewed Dr. Abraham Hyam uh, twice on my radio show, and you can go to the, my podcast. Go to chondrotpodcast.com, and you can search his name. A brilliant researcher out of Israel, and he looked at a condition called light at night, L-A-N. I don't know if any of you have heard of light at night, but he feels a lot of the chronic illnesses in our society and our generation is due to unwanted light at night. In the old days, you lived on a farm. You know, when the sun set, you went to bed. You didn't have iPhones, computers, up all night being exposed to light. So what he did, he, he took this theory into the laboratory. He took a bunch of mice, injected the mice with prostate cancer, breast cancer. He looked at obesity, diabetes, macular degeneration, on and on. One group of mice, he kept in a normal circadian rhythm. A normal circadian rhythm is light during the day, darkness at night. The other group had light during the day and light at night. And at the end of the study, he was really surprised. The group of mice that had light at night had a greater growth of breast cancer, prostate cancer, increase in macular degeneration, obesity, diabetes, and vascular disease. All these things were prominent. In fact, Dr. Hyam feels that the 
increased incidence of breast cancer in the world is due to unwanted light at night. So this was a phenomenal experiment, but he repeated it because he wanted to find out exactly what color light or wavelength of light was the culprit. So he repeated the whole thing, had one group of mice being exposed to red light, blue light, green light, yellow light, purple light, all the wavelengths and colors to see which wavelength caused the greatest damage. Any ideas on what wavelength, what color caused the greatest damage at night? Blue. Red? Red? Blue. 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 Anybody green? Yellow? Blue. Blue. Blue, Blue light. Oh. I've been reading a book called The Circadian Code, and the researcher... And you got to read my book, it. The Ten Essentials to Save Your Sight, and all of you will get a copy of my book. And if you're listening to this and you want a copy, just go to chondrodbook.com and you can download it for free. But I have a chapter on light. Is there an light. audio version? A what? Is there an audio version? Uh, not yet. There's an audio version for healing the eye the natural way. But if you want to read the book, I'll sign you up. <laughs> so anyway, blue light, unfortunately, our government is forcing us to use compact fluorescent lights. And compact fluorescent lights give off a blue spectrum. Blue light is harmful at night. Now, we need blue light during the day. That's why God made the sky blue and the ocean blue. But once the sun sets, what happens? We get the red times. We need red at night. We don't need red at night. We should avoid all light at night. But we're getting exposed with too much blue light. Now I have an interesting device here. Um, could you make sure I'm in focus? This is a light noise detector. And this is a good old fashioned incandescent light here. And I'm going to hold this up against the light. And it may be just a very, very slight hum. Hardly anything. Hardly anything. Now, right above us here, I hate to say this, but we used to have fluorescent lights. And we changed them to LEDs thinking that it would take away the harmful effect of lights. It didn't. <laughs> Listen. These are LEDs? They're LEDs. Oh, wow. So LEDs are not safe. Oh, oh that's okay. We don't have to do that. <laughs> It's the good old-fashioned incandescent lights. Now, I have a lot more respect, and this is not a commercial, I'm not being paid for Apple. <laughs> but Apple has um, a program called the Night Shift, that during the day, the phone is a blue, and at night, it automatically goes to a red tone. Did you know that? No. They understand that. And also, I've, I've done a comparison with different phones. And the Apple phone, very little noise. But the other phones, Samsung and Android, a lot of noise. A lot of noise. But a lot of people say that when you use your cell phone, you should really keep it away from you. You know, put on speakerphone and talk like this because you are getting a lot of unwanted um, electromagnetic energy. Uh, there's another, uh, uh, there's a book out by Samuel Millman or Samuel Milhouse, I'm not sure of the name, on dirty electricity. I also interviewed him on my radio. And he goes into depth about the dangers of dirty electricity. And yesterday we talked about when it current flows through a wire, you get an electromagnetic frequency. So a lot of us are becoming sensitive 
uh, to this electromagnetic energy. And I have found many patients are developing macular problems, in particular macular wrinkle and pucker, due to something called a smart meter. Now they're installing smart meters. Years ago, they would have a meter made, a meter guy come and read the meter. Now there's no more meter guy. There is now a device that sends a signal back to the utility company. And not only are they monitoring your overall consumption, they actually know when you turn your TV on at 2 o'clock in the morning or you're using your toaster. They can monitor all your activities. So, creepy. creepy. <laughs> And it's damaging. So I would, find, I would ask you, find out where your smart meter is located. And if it's near your bedroom, you got a problem. I had some patients that had trouble sleeping. They got eye problems. And the smart meter is like right outside where the headboard is. So there's ways that you can protect your home. Uh, something called a Faraday cage, uh, which is a metal shield that blocks out the uh, electromagnetic signal. Or I had one electrical engineer and we were trying to work on, I was trying to get him to develop an app. You know, now they have these phone apps that you could shut off your electrical circuit just with your app at night. Because most of us go to bed, our Wi-Fi is running, we have our, our clock and electrical appliances in our bedroom, and we have current. You got to have your bedroom electrically neutral. Get out all the wiring. I cut. I turn it all off at night. Good. Turn it off at night. But most people have their Wi-Fi running, and you do have. There are. What you about know, if you have it outside in the garage? The distance may be okay, but it's not going to affect you. What about a race machine running all night? <laughs> Well, there's, there's dirty electricity and good electricity. I'm assuming that the right frequencies are good frequencies. Good frequencies, yes. So I assume it goes through brick, too, brick buildings? It'll pass through brick, yeah. Because I have five of them right outside my bedroom. Yeah. You have what? Five meters. Five. Well, you'd have to get it measured. There are devices. I have a device that measures the electromagnetic energy. Can really the other right? thing that's dirty electricity is the microwave. I hope no one here has a microwave oven. I don't. I do. That's a joke. They are horrible. Does have one or using one? He had one, used one, know of somebody that has one. We have one in our house, but we don't ever use it because. Oh, you could probably just get rid of it. Because I, my mother, uh, God bless her soul, she passed away several years ago, but she loved her microwave and she would microwave water. Mm -hmm. I'd want some tea and she'd microwave it for me. And I'd say, Mom, she would actually microwave things in the styrofoam cup. Oh, oh that was and I'd say, Mom. What? And she wouldn't listen to me. Um, and they have actually, there was a study done where they actually used microwave water to water plants, and the plants died. There was a high school experiment. Microwave does not warm. It destroys the molecular structure. So you don't want to use a microwave for anything. Get rid of it. And we have an electromagnetic meter to measure dirty electricity. There could be a microwave oven uh, maybe 20 feet away, and when you turn it on, it goes off the scale. You're getting those. In fact, it's banned in most European countries, the microwave. It was initially developed during World War II, to heat food uh, in the field, but then they discovered about know, the harmful effects. For some reason, we're embracing the microwave here in the United States. If we and don't tell me what they're doing, but, you know, I mean by that, that because we all set up with that in the wall. If we unplug, unplug it, it, you're probably getting rid of it. But I just don't want you to use it. You know, if it's there, somebody's going to use it. Get rid of it and put a you know, a regular oven. That's what usually we do. Every time we go into a new home, they have a microwave. We just get the microwave out and put a small oven in a regular oven. So light therapy is really amazing. We, we also, uh, all of you are getting the OligoScan. The OligoScan is a device. It's actually a French device 
where we use light to measure intracellular minerals and heavy metals. And this is based on NASA technology or something called spectrophotometry. When I studied chemistry, uh, we used the spectrophotometer to identify any, any unknown element. You could take an unknown gas or element, put it under spectrophotometry, and by the light frequency it generated, you know exactly what the composition. So that's what we're doing. We're measuring your uh, intracellular minerals and heavy metals using spectrophotometry. So light therapy not only affects the body on the cellular level, it has a profound effect on the autonomic nervous system. We've been talking about balancing the autonomic nervous system. And light therapy can help you balance that autonomic nervous system. The parasympathetic is the red side, or the sympathetic is the red side, parasympathetic is the blue. And all of us are not in the balance. The balance is the center, which is green. And so we use light therapy to push the body to the center, which is, which is green. It annoys me that I have a microwave in my house that I use. But what annoys me is that why aren't I told these facts when I'm buying the piece of equipment and I say, is there any harm in me using this? They don't know, or wouldn't they share that information? No. Do with us? Okay. Of course not. They no, don't care. Money. 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 Also, I want to get back to the sunlight. Um, Unfortunately, we're kind of marketed having a fear of sunlight, avoid the sunlight, mm -hmm. sunglasses, wear a hat. And one of the biggest problems people are faced with right now is vitamin D deficiency. And the reason why we're all vitamin D deficient, we're not getting enough sunlight. We need ultraviolet light. Without ultraviolet light, our body will die. Now, too much ultraviolet light is harmful to your body. And just like too much of water can kill you, too much oxygen can kill you, too much of anything can kill you. We need a moderate amount of ultraviolet light. There was a study done at Will's Eye Hospital in Philadelphia where they demonstrated that the rabbit <coughs> retinal pigment epithelium will not regenerate without having low levels of ultraviolet light. We need ultraviolet light. Most ophthalmologists will quote a study that was published in the American Journal of Ophthalmology that demonstrated the harmful effects of ultraviolet light. Would you like to know how that study was done? Can you tell me if it was a good study? They got a group of monkeys, and the monkeys had their lens removed. The human lens protects your eye from excessive amounts of ultraviolet light. Those of you that have had cataract surgery you will have probably more ultraviolet light going into your eye because you don't have your natural lens. Then the monkeys had dilating drops put in. How many here have had dilating drops? And you go outside in bright lights, it's painful. Why? Because your pupil can't constrict. Your body has a natural mechanism. If things are too bright, your pupil gets smaller. So these monkeys had their eyes dilated. Then the monkeys had a lid speculum put in to prevent them from blinking or squeezing. Once again, if it's bright outside, you kind of squint to reduce the light. So they had their lens removed, they had dilating lights, they had a lid speculum put in their eye, and their heads were strapped to the chair. Then they got a 10,000 watt xenon arc lamp and shined it into their eyes for 16 minutes. The monkeys were then harvested, sacrificed, and they looked at the retina. Oh, ultraviolet light damages the retina. So uh, Dr. Ott, who's a big advocate of the benefits of ultraviolet light, stated it's much like having a group of humans walk into a blast furnace and everybody comes out burned and you say heat is bad for the body. So too much of anything is bad for the body. Now, um, I think, you know, First day we talked about a healthy diet. 
How many here have eaten a lot of carrots and find out your skin gets a little orange? Well, you're getting excess pigment. When you eat healthy organic fruits and vegetables, that pigment helps protect you from excessive amount of ultraviolet light. Also, an eye doctor can look in your eye and he can tell you if you have a healthy diet. There's something called the macula lutea. And if you eat a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables and lutein, you'll have a little yellow reflex in your eye. And if you have a crappy diet, the doctor looks in, there's no yellow reflex. In fact, there's actually an instrument developed to measure the amount of lutein in your eye that some doctors are using. So all this protects your eye. Sunscreen may be more hazardous than benefit because you're putting petrochemicals on your skin, which is absorbed. It only blocks certain wavelengths of ultraviolet light. That can be more harmful. <clears throat> I think there was a study done in New Zealand where they wanted to look at the effects of ultraviolet light on the development of melanoma. So they took group, two groups of people. One were surfers that spent a lot of time on the beach, and they took another group that spent a lot of time working under fluorescent lights in a factory. And interestingly, the group that worked in the factory under uh, ultraviolet, not ultraviolet, the uh, fluorescent lights had a greater incidence than melanoma. Mm. But I don't want you to leave here thinking, oh, I can go outside and spend hours out on the beach. No. You know, a moderate amount of sunlight is necessary. Half an hour? It all depends on where you are located and your skin tone. Because on a cloudy day here in Florida, where it's sea level, high humidity, you can spend a half an hour on bright sunlight and not get a burn. But when I lived in Arizona in Phoenix at 2,000 feet above sea level with no humidity, that sun is really, really dangerous. Very, very bright. So it depends where you live. It depends on your skin color. Uh, you know, and many other factors. You have to listen to your body. You don't want to burn. Moderate amount of sunlight is necessary. So you are going to uh, be getting an ultraviolet blood irradiation today. And I tell people it's like spending a couple months on the beach, getting a lot of ultraviolet light into your body. And it does last for four or five days after the treatment. Every hemoglobin molecule is impregnated with that ultraviolet light goes throughout your whole body and uh, has a beneficial effect, helping rejuvenate, improving oxygen uptake of your cells, a lot of great benefits. Does it give you vitamin D? Uh, no vitamin D, but it helps stimulate your body's mechanism for developing vitamin D. Um, vitamin D, uh, I think all of us are probably deficient in vitamin D, and that is an ingredient in my vitamin a nutritional formula, vitamin D. You need vitamin D. D3 with K2. Hmm? D3 with K2. Do you have the K2 with it? Uh, I'm not sure. I have to check. That's a good question. I don't think we do. Okay. Now, before you leave, you're going to be getting instructions on your light therapy that you're going to be doing at home. Now, at one time, I would suggest to patients, you can do the light therapy any time during the day that because of Professor Hyam's study showing the harmful effects of certain wavelengths of light at night, I only want you to do light therapy during the day. So by daylight, I mean 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night. Because now that winter's here, the sun's setting early, 6 p.m., and many of you are working to get home from work. Just don't do it 10 o'clock or 11 before you go to bed. The best thing to do is to avoid all light at night. When the sun sets, rest your eyes. Now, but many of you gotta check your email, you gotta watch your TV, gotta watch Mark Levin at night. There's something called blue blockers. This is a shooter's glasses, it's amber, orange, it blocks the blue light. Some doctors recommend you use them all day I don't recommend you use them during the day because remember, your eye needs blue light during the day. At night, you want to avoid blue light. So if you're going to be on the computer watching TV, put the blue blockers on. 
that will reduce the uh, the absorption of the blue light. If we if we, if, uh, we go outside and we cannot use the commercial uh, protection for our skin, what else could we use? Uh, coconut oil. Uh, I don't think you need protection, just moderate exposure. Or they now they have ultraviolet clothing. You can wear long sleeve shirts. That's what I do here in Florida. If I'm going to be at the beach, I have a long sleeve uh, sun blocking lightweight clothing that you wear okay. and wear wear a hat. But remember, you need water. You need moderate exposure. So I no longer wear sunglasses during during the day. But if I'm going to be on the beach all day and getting a lot of exposure, I'll wear them. But I used to be the person that put my sunglasses on to walk across the street. You need a little bit of ultraviolet light. Um, they say with macular degeneration, wear sunglasses all the time outdoors. Do you agree with that? No. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've had cataract surgery, you have an artificial lens, you may need to. Right. But you do need a moderate amount of sunlight exposure. Regarding a blue blocker, is that a certain brand or type, or is it any amber? Uh, they're called blue blockers. But most of them are amber. I think there is a specific uh, wavelength that, that they, they block. Oh, okay. But you can buy the blue blockers uh, at any optical shop, sporting goods store. Mm. So they're very... They're commonly available. Oh. There are some really high-priced blue blockers. I'm sure. Uh, but I don't think they're necessary, but we can talk about that. Or talk to your optician mm. uh, My or optometrist. Says that uh, there's two brands, and RA Optics is one of them that I remember. Mm -hmm. He said those are the ones that have had the extensive study for the right wavelengths. And he's, those are the only two brands he recommends. Okay, that's uh, good to know. From my cardiologist. Send me the information so I, like I can. Corning used to have a really good blue blocker that I used to recommend that they no longer manufacture. Mm -hmm. That's the one that they did a lot of research on. Yes? And sir, because of my glaucoma, if what happened if there's a glare and just here having the windows, you know, it, it splits in two and, and it's very annoying to, to look at things. But this, when you I wear it, it's normal. That's a blue blocker. Ah, okay. Blue That's like she got a blue blocker. They're, they're amber glasses. Yeah. They're amber glasses. <clears throat> My cardiologist also recommended the blue blockers during the day if you do a lot of computer work. Um, I don't agree with that because you need blue light during the day. At night. Well, he also Your cardiologist does more than most eye doctors. <laughs> yes. He, um, he recommends being outside for um, anywhere from half an hour to an hour a day, but he, so if you're working inside the blue blocker on the computer, if you're on the computer, that it's important to block some of the negative. No, I don't agree with that because you need a lot of blue light during the day. Okay. You can't have an overdose of blue light during the day. You need blue light during the day. It's giving your body energy. But at night, you have to avoid it. That's a circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. So I, I disagree with that. Okay. 